Looking at today, we're going to be able to add and subtract positive and negative fractions and mixed numbers. So we're going to be basically taking things that you already know how to do, add and subtract fractions and mixed numbers, and we're going to add that piece to it where we're dealing with negative numbers. So you've always in the past, the only time you added and subtracted negative numbers was when it had to do with just integers, um, positive and negative whole numbers. So today we're going to be adding in the fractions piece, the mixed numbers piece, it's going to get a little bit more complex in terms of the amount of work and the amount of things that you have to take care of, which is why I've been stressing for several days now, perfect practice makes perfect, and be focused on those details because that's where we're headed today. All right, um, based on your do nows, you guys have already proven to me that you can deal with fractions with uncommon denominators, so we're not gonna spend any time going over that. I do want you really quickly to go ahead and change these mixed numbers two improper fractions, just to double check and prove to me that you can do that still. All right, go ahead and show me the ones place for your numerator, for this first one. For your numerator, show me the ones place. Use your hands. What's the ones place of your numerator? What's your numerator? What's the ones place in your numerator? So you should be showing me the ones place. Good. Almost all of you are showing me a nine. That means that you know that you multiply five times three. That gives you 15. You add the four. That gives you 19. Denominator stays the same. Please show me using two hands the whole numerator. I want the numerator for the second one. You can use two hands. You should be able to represent it with two hands. Look at those problem solving skills. Showing me one and a three, showing me that that is indeed 13. That's four times three is 12, plus one is 13. The denominator stays the same. Good. All right, so that was the only other piece that we didn't practice during the do now that's going to make sure that we're successful today. One thing I do want to go over, we're going to try an old school problem from 6th grade. I call it old school problem from 6th grade because it has no negatives or positives really to deal with. But we're going to do it two different ways. On the left hand side, we're going to do it with just improper fractions. On the right hand side, we're going to do it and try and do it without improper fractions. And we're going to see what happens here. So on the left hand side, split up my space here a little bit. I've got 5 and 2 thirds. And I'm going to multiply 5 and 2 thirds, that's 5 times 3 is 15, plus the 2 gives me 17 thirds. And over here I'm going to be subtracting 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11 fourths. So this is probably the way that Ms. Wilcox taught you. She said always change it to improper fractions first. And we're just going to go ahead and continue through this process, make sure that we have common denominators. And here I'm multiplying by 4 over 4 and 3 over 3. This is just a really good point for me to emphasize something about this particular multiplication. What am I really doing with this particular multiplication? Kevin. I'm getting an equivalent fraction because, Andrea, what is this multiplication of 4 over 4 really? Making the common denominator. What is multiplying by 4 over 4? What am I really multiplying by? Multiplying by 4 over 4. What am I really multiplying by, ECs? 1. And that's why it gives us the equivalent fraction that Kevin was talking about. Okay? It gives us an equivalent fraction because we're multiplying by 1. What happens when you multiply by 1? It's the same thing. So that's why it's equivalent. It just looks a little bit different. So I just wanted to emphasize that point because that is such an important concept in algebra. All right, so we end up getting 68 over 12, and we're going to be subtracting 33 over 12. We get 68 minus 33, Mr. Ross, 35. should be 35 over 12. If we change that to a mixed number, which you don't have to, that's 2 and 11 twelfths. No big deal. Nothing wrong here. This is exactly the way Ms. Wilcox taught you to do it. 
Now, we're going to try it um, without changing it to improper fractions. We're going to see what happens. So I'm going to work with 5 and 2 thirds. And I'm going to be subtracting 2 and 3 fourths. So if I want to go ahead and do this, I'm going to have to go ahead and make sure the fraction parts have common denominators. That wouldn't seem like a logical first step. Here I think this work gets kind of messy, but we'll work through it. It's 5 and 8 twelfths. And 2 and 9 twelfths. So I'm subtracting 5 and 8 twelfths and 2 and 9 twelfths. I'm subtracting 2 and 9 twelfths from 5 and 8 twelfths. What looks like it's a problem here? What looks like it is an issue here? Yang. 8 is smaller than 9. 8 is smaller than 9. We cannot subtract 9 from 8. It's not enough. If we tried to think about it and tried to think about it in terms of mixed numbers, this would give us 5 minus 2 is 3 and negative 1 12. That's weird. Okay? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What I find most commonly happens here, though, is that you don't even think about the negative 1, and you just go, oh, 9 minus 8, that's 1. Okay? There is a way that you can go about doing this without changing it to improper fractions. But if you do it, every problem is going to be different. You may have four different ways to deal with problems, if you don't change them to improper fractions. Whereas improper fractions, there's only, if you do it with improper fractions, it's the same thing every time. There's not going to be any really major differences there. Okay? So, that was just an exercise to remind ourselves and prove to ourselves that we need to go ahead and change them to improper fractions. That's all that was. And I just wanted to really hammer that home. We have to change them to fractions. Otherwise, we're going to be creating more mess than it's worth. So the other piece that we have to review here is really thinking about, since we're taking all this information that we already know about fractions, and we're adding that piece about positive and negative numbers, let's go ahead and quickly remind ourselves those key details, those key points about adding positive and negative integers. So thinking about adding positive and negative integers, for instance, I have the problem negative 4 minus 23. What are the things that we absolutely need to do here if we're going to do this particular problem down here? Ricardo, what do we need to do? We need to... Oh, um, we have to turn it into a plus sign. Yeah, so we need to leave change switch. So one thing that we always need to remember, negatives and positives, leave change switch when necessary. Or leave change switch when needed. Right. Also, when dealing with positive and negative numbers, what else do we need to make sure that we're thinking about? After we've leave change switch this, what's the next thing we need to be thinking about? Winta. Should I subtract or add? Should I subtract or add? And so we think about that as like signs add or opposite signs subtract. And after we've done the like signs add and the different signs subtract, what's the last thing that we always need to be thinking about? Kevin. Yeah, take the sign of the larger number. Take the sign of the larger number. All right, so the question now is, now that we're dealing with fractions, mixed numbers, improper fractions, are any of these rules about dealing with positive and negatives, are any of these rules going to change? Give yes or no. What do you think? Are any of these rules going to change? Kip yes or Kip no. Are any of these rules going to change? Mm -hmm. 
No, they're not going to change. Okay, so it's the same thing. The only thing is that we've just got more details to keep track of. Numerators, denominators, improper fractions, mixed numbers, all of that other stuff. So we just have to be super organized with our work and so super focused in on the details. All right. All right, so now all we have to do is deal with the fractions. What's the difference? There is no difference, so let's just go ahead and do it. Here I have negative two-fifths plus negative one-third. I'm automatically thinking to myself, do I need a leaf change switch? No. I recognize these have like signs, so I can go ahead and label this one now that I'm thinking about it. This is going to be a like signs add problem. Now before I can add these particular problems, because they are fractions, I need to do what? All right, so I need to make common denominators. So I'm going to take my negative two-fifths. I'm going to rewrite it down here. Take my negative one-third, rewrite it down here. And that's my space where I'm going to make common denominators. Now, one thing that I'm always thinking about every time I write down a step, I'm double-checking my signs. Okay, so I'm thinking to myself right now, negative two-fifths, that was supposed to be negative. Negative one-third, that was supposed to be negative. It's so common to lose negatives along the way. They're such small little details of work. So that's why I'm always double checking along the way. So I'm gonna multiply by three over three and five over five. That's gonna give me negative two times three, that's negative six over 15 and negative five over 15. So here we recognize very early on in this problem that this was like signs add. So I'm going to go ahead and add, but I'm also needing to take the sign of the larger number. So 6 plus 5 is 11 over 15. Take the sign of the larger number. Both numbers are negative, so the larger <coughs> number must be negative. <coughs> Let's quickly talk about this fraction. Negative 11 fifteenths. If I wanted to change this to a decimal, I would go ahead and divide. Negative 11 divided by positive 15. And I would get a positive or negative decimal. Everybody. Negative. negative. Now, would it be the same if I had written my fraction like this? Kip yes or kip no, would this be the same? Kip yes or kip no, would this be the same? Some of you saying no. Let's think about it this way. Let's say I wanted to change it into a decimal, and I wanted to divide this fraction. I would do 11 divided by negative 15. Would I get a positive or negative answer? And if it was the other way, we said it would be? So kip yes or kip no. Is there actually a difference? No. There's no difference. It doesn't matter where we put that negative. Now, is this any different? Is this any different? Why? Why is this different? Joseph. Yeah, if we thought about this as changing into a decimal, we did the negative divided by a negative, we would get a positive answer. So in math, a way a mathematician will write that, they'll pretty much always write it with the negative on top. Sometimes they may even do this. They may even write the negative off to the, oops, off to the side. It's all the same. As long as there's only one negative, then it's all the same. If you try and put in two negatives, all right, well, that's getting nutty. You can't do that. That makes a positive answer, okay? It's completely different, all right? So we'll box that in. All right, let's move over here to negative two-fifths minus negative one-third. What's the absolute first thing that I need to think about? Jackie. Yep, so I'm... Or peaceful plus fine, you know, leave change switch, whatever, whichever way you think about this particular problem. I think about it as changing and switching. That's me. That means I have a negative two-fifths. And as I'm rewriting it, a positive one-third. That's, again, I'm double-checking. After this leaf change switch, I had a positive one-third. Okay? I don't want to get those negative signs mixed up already. 
So I need to go ahead and find common denominators. So I'm going to multiply times 3 over 3 times 5 over 5. Negative 6 over 15. And 5 over 15. Again, double checking my negatives. Uh, so this one was supposed to be negative. This one's supposed to be positive. Good. That also reminds me that now that I'm getting ready to do the addition or subtraction, this is like signs add or different signs subtract. Different signs subtract. So I have 6 minus 5. That gives me 1 over 15. Don't forget to take the sign of the larger number. In this case, the larger number is the 6, which means our answer is positive or negative? Negative. 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 Coming from this larger negative 6 over 15. Now, can I determine before... Can I determine even before I got common denominators, can I determine whether my answer is going to be positive or negative? How? He sees? How did we know that fraction was bigger, though? The answer is we can't. If we know those numbers as decimals, we might be able to, but otherwise, we can't. So you can't make that determination of which one is the larger number until you are 100% sure. The only way you're gonna be 100% sure is if they have the same denominator, okay? Make sure we're not making decisions about taking the sign of the larger number until we have common denominators. All right, and now a mixed number one. Negative 5 and 3 eighths minus negative 2 and 4 fifths. First things first, what should we do? Mr. Ross. Make it a mixed number. Make it a mixed number. There's even one thing that I would want to do even before I change it from a mixed number to an improper fraction. When, so what's that one more thing that I want to do even before? Yeah, we're going to leave change switch this. So we're recognizing this is subtraction. So now I'm going to do what Anthony says. I'm going to change it to my improper fraction. 5 times 8 plus 3. That's 43 over 8. Quickly double checking, this one's supposed to be negative. All right, moving on to the next one. After the leave change switch, this one's supposed to be positive. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14 fifths. And again, this one's supposed to be positive. I'm sorry, that's really sloppy. Try again, Mr. Boots. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and find my common denominators. Multiply by 5 over 5. Multiply by 8 over 8. Gives me negative 215 fortieths. and positive 112 fortieths. So again, making sure my positives and negatives are right, because now we need to make sure like signs add or different signs subtract. We got some different signs subtract here. And here I can make the determination about which one is the larger number and what my sign is going to be. Naomi, what is the sign of our answer going to be? Positive or negative? All right, so she recognizes the 215 is going to be larger, so that means we're going to have a negative answer. Now I can do the subtraction. 215 minus 112, Oscar. 103. 103, don't forget your denominator. And we're good. One thing that I have not been thinking about is simplifying. Can this one be simplified? Um, 103. Just thinking about some of the factors I know. That is not a factor of 7 or 11. Uh, it doesn't end in a 5 or 0, so it's not a factor of, or excuse me, it's not a multiple of 5 or 10. 
I add it up, I get one plus zero plus three is four. It's not a factor of three or nine. It's not an even number. So no, this one actually doesn't really factor. This one's good, simplify. Bam. Yes, ma'am. Could you turn it into a mixed number? Good question. Keep yes or keep no. Could we turn it into a mixed number? Yeah, absolutely. We could turn this into a mixed number. Keep yes or keep no. Does Mr. Boots really care for mixed numbers? No, not really. Um, I know that you guys know how to change things into mixed numbers if you need to. For me, I don't want to force you to do that extra step of work when I know you know how to do it. So this is the fastest and easiest way for us to check our understanding. Yes, ma'am. Is making it into a mixed number simplified? I think that is a great debate amongst the mathematic community. They might say, some people will say improper fractions are more simplified, and some people would say that mixed numbers are more simplified. In the end, you're only gonna be doing this in the real world, um, and when you're doing it in the real world, you'll have to decide which one makes more sense for you. If you're going to use it again for some other calculation, Sometimes you'll turn it into a decimal. Sometimes it'll be easier to change it into an improper fraction. If you're trying to compare it to some other number, it may be easier to change it to a mixed number. It kind of depends. Good question. All right. And we're going to do one more. Uh, I'm going to ignore this one off to the side. Oop. Ignore this one off to the side over here. Uh, we won't need to do that one today, I don't think. So I'm going to look at this next one. And first thing I need to do is what? Emlyn. Yeah, turn the mixed number to improper fraction because there's no leaf change switch to do here. Now, for this first one, this is a no-brainer. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 is 22 over 5. No-brainer. Now, this next one gets kind of confusing. Wait. I have a mixed number, but there's no fraction part of it. How am I going to turn this into a improper fraction? Genesis. Yeah, throw it over one. Boom, improper fraction right there. I got this, Mr. Boots, no big deal. All right, so now we need to get common denominators, which should be super easy. Multiply times five over five. Uh, here times one over one, or just leave it the same. Either way, 22. It's going to give me negative 30 over five. Like signs add or different signs subtract, everybody? Different signs subtract. Take the sign of the larger number. The larger number is positive or negative? Negative 8 over 5. All right. So let's summarize really quickly, thinking about the steps that we have to do even before we're ready to do add or subtract. What are the things that we have to do? First things first. What's the first thing that we always check to see if we need to do, Sadie? Change to improper fractions. That's actually going to be second. There's one thing that I want to check on. We don't have to do it for all problems. But we definitely do need to change to improper fractions. That's one thing we have to do. In terms of the order I do these things, it really doesn't matter, but I like a specific order. What's the other thing we have to check, though, first? Um, yeah, leaf change switch. <laughs> check for leaf... <laughs> check for leaf change switch, if needed. So I'll just put if needed here. So leaf change switch if needed, then change to improper fractions. What else do we need to do, Mr. Matlock? Since we're dealing with fractions. Not going to be quite ready for that yet. What is the other thing we need to do, Bijan? Yeah, we've got to get those common denominators. Did not. It's right there. <laughs> Common denominators. Oh, 
So before we do the adding and subtracting, we have to leave chain switch if necessary. We have to change the improper fractions and we have to get common denominators. It's just a lot of extra steps. It's time consuming. It takes time, but it's not hard. You guys know everything that you needed to know to do these problems even before you walked in the door today. It's just a matter of keeping focused on the details, practicing perfect work, so you're perfect practice, okay? Let's go ahead and quickly hit those key points. This should be super easy today. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Jacqueline? Always check to see if you have a leaf change switch. I think that's an excellent beginning to a key point, but not a full key point. This should be super easy today. Yes, sir. You may leave answers as improper fractions. That's not necessarily a key point for me today. I'm thinking about one thing. We're going to have to do very little writing here if we have our brains engaged and our eyes on the page. Genesis. Andrea. Um, the little, the words, the we wrote the hey, look, we already summarized today's lesson. That's basically what a key point is. Star. The other detail that I think is our key point today has to do with the thing that we just really need to focus in on. Kevin? Yeah. Double and triple check. Signs. Double check signs. Constantly looking through your problem, looking back at the previous step, making sure your signs match up. Always double checking those signs. That's the most common mistakes here, all right?